the Marvel Comics of Western Animation? Well, if Stan Lee was the father of American superheroes, then William Hanna and Joseph Barbera are the fathers of American cartoon characters. And if Studio Ghibli gave us Totoro, Hanna-Barbera gave us Tom and Jerry. So I'm back to remind y'all about the iconic American animation studio, Hanna-Barbera. No, this is not an icons under the radar video, but I wanted to point out the studio's influence on American culture and how important it is that we preserve their characters. Coming up in the golden age of American animation, from 1930 to about 1970, the Hanna-Barbera headquarters came up in Los Angeles, California, and was founded by Joseph Barbera and William Hanna. Before that, Joseph and William had already created their first short form cartoon, Tom and Jerry, which was created in 1940. Tom and Jerry is almost as old as Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, two characters that are not in the Hanna-Barbera universe, but in their own Warner Brothers Looney Tune universe. After the establishment of their production company, they got right into creating some of the most recognizable cartoon characters on the planet, including Yogi Bear and Huckleberry Hound. In 1960, they gave us the often duplicated but never replicated iconic animated family sitcom, The Flintstones. Now during this golden age of animation, we had the big brother of animation itself, Warner Brothers Animation Studios. Warner Brothers, of course, has given us the Looney Tunes. Them, along with Hanna-Barbera, basically created Western cartoons as we know it. So in an American comic book sense, one could say that Warner Brothers is more like DC because they own DC Comics and all their media. But I would say Warner Brothers is more like Marvel because it's the more well-known source of superheroes and they keep pushing out these live action movies. I'd also say that DC is more like Hanna-Barbera because DC actually has more characters than Marvel, but it has a lower account of modern day success than its counterpart. And their property is more at risk of having a lot of their characters be like forgotten, unfortunately. So just like DC and Marvel, Hanna-Barbera and Warner Brothers animation are two sides of the same coin. However, one could survive fine without the other, but the world would not be the same with only one of them. Western culture needed both sides of these Chuck E. Cheese fun tokens in order to thrive. These two giants led the animation industry until the end of the 60s. By this time, Warner Brothers had already made all of their classic Looney Tunes content and were closing down the animation department due to production costs going up while not getting enough of a profit back. Hanna-Barbera, however, took the lead and created the iconic Scooby-Doo series during this time and throughout the 70s made even more memorable cartoons like and the Teen Angels and spin-offs of their popular shows from the previous decades by the 1980s with an exception to shows like the smurfs and the super friends they were full-on producing cartoons from their cartoons they started a thing where they were making kid versions of their classics like Here's tom and jerry kids the tom and jerry kids Warner Brothers had restarted their animation department during the 80s, but didn't really get full on into making new content until the 90s. They came back with brand new shows like the Batman animated series, Animaniacs, Tiny Toons, and Pinky and the Brain. A new era of animation had began by the end of the 80s. And in 1992, a little TV station dedicated to only showing cartoons came up and they called this station the Cartoon Network. As huge as Hanna-Barbera became, Cartoon Network first started out as an extension of Hanna-Barbera and Warner Brothers worked with them as a sister company or an uncle company, if you will. And they became like this wonderful family of animated content. The growth and direction of Cartoon Network is one of the reasons why the 90s was so great. During the 90s, Hanna-Barbera had their first revival through Cartoon Network. A lot of us watched all these old cartoons play through the network back to back and they 
would have these time blocks where they'd only play the classics. Just about every animated show Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera had made in the past 40 years was being showcased through Cartoon Network. But when the co-founder of Hanna-Barbera, William Hanna, passed away in 2001, the company was absorbed into Warner Brothers Animation and Cartoon Network Studios became its own entity. You could say that the beginning of the decline of Cartoon Network started when Hanna-Barbera was no longer producing and pushing their content through the Cartoon Network. Even though CN did well at producing their own shows, it all eventually began to stretch thin by the end of the decade. All of the classics they used to show from Hanna-Barbera was moved to a separate premium channel called Boomerang. Shows like Courage the Cowardly Dog and Ed, Ed and Eddie started to end after five or six seasons, and there wasn't much new programming being made to replace the old programming that was ending. Warner Brothers also started holding back their classics as well, and by the late 2000s, Cartoon Network was just kind of hanging there by a thread. I'd say Cartoon Network honestly had a good 15 year run before it seemed to run out of new content. Warner Brothers through the 2000s had kind of been keeping modern cartoons alive on the Saturday morning after school front and it was also helping with Adult Swim's late night front for Cartoon Network. Adult Swim has mostly kept Cartoon Network alive almost entirely from the late 2000s to the first half of the 2010s as they were producing more shows than daytime Cartoon Network was. Hanna-Barbera by the end of the 2000s had kind of gotten lost in all the sauce and none of it was being broadcast in the same way anymore and you basically had to pay more to watch the classics through Boomerang. So in the midst of this Cartoon Network decline, Warner Brothers was keeping the intellectual property of Hanna-Barbera alive by making new CGI movies with Yogi Bear, Top Cat, and those Smurfs. They also produced many new iterations of Scooby-Doo and new Tom and Jerry cartoons. The entire way we watch content has changed drastically since 2010, as most of everything we watch now, if not everything we watch now, is being streamed on demand. Many smaller animation studios and even the big ones are reaching huge audiences through these newer streaming apps like Hulu and uh, HBO Max. I'd say from 2012 to now, 2021, there's been a second revival on classic properties, even if the process has been kind of slow. Since the inclusion of HBO Max, most of Warner Brothers' classic content, along with Hanna-Barbera's classic content, has found a new home. WB, over the decade, has been starting up brand new high-definition shows for these classic characters, reaching audiences that had started leaving broadcasting platforms like Cartoon Network Network and Boomerang entirely. Nani? The specific second revival of Hanna-Barbera properties began the same way it all started with Tom and Jerry. Following the comeback of Tom and Jerry in the early 2010s, Warner Brothers looked to push things to another level by premiering a live action movie in 2021 and to celebrate 80 years of Tom and Jerry existing. The live action movie was not received all that well. It was about Tom and Jerry running around in New York City. But during the summer of 2021, WB started a new animated series about Tom and Jerry in New York. And it seems to be way more palatable because it's all animated. But the big Avengers Assemble moment for Hanna-Barbera is when HBO dropped a brand new animated show around the same time called Jellystone. Jellystone is a new show that features the majority of Hanna-Barbera's classic characters in a modern cartoon format. Funny enough, it was developed by the creator of Chowder, one of the shows that kept Cartoon Network afloat from 2007 to 2010. Greenlighting a show like Jellystone is the best thing Warner Brothers could have done to uphold the Hanna-Barbera legacy and introduce these characters to a brand new audience. This is a show that could be watched by people under 21 who never knew who Jabberjaw or Top Cat was, but now all of a sudden, there are teenagers who know about El Cabong. In Jellystone, they've changed a few things to keep up with the times. Like for example, they've changed a few of the male characters into females and El Cabong's little donkey sidekick is suspiciously absent. Probably for the same reason Speedy Gonzalez is gone from Looney Tunes. 
The show has a lot of modern day jokes too, like a big gag reference to anime. So this show is a complete modernization of the classics and that's totally fine. This is like Avengers Endgame. Over time, Hanna-Barbera Studios and Golden Age Cartoon Network has been Thanos snapped away. But Warner Brothers Animation remained and years later, they managed to bring back Hanna-Barbera. The Robin to their Batman, the Barbera to their Hannah. This second revival of the classics was really important because the classics stand the test of time. Looney Tunes and the Hanna-Barbera fam have remained funny and iconic for a whole lifetime. And while these new modern shows come and go, the classics will always be played in between time to remind us what a cartoon is supposed to be. We must protect Hanna-Barbera at all costs. Also, if it's not broken, don't replace it. The classics age well and original ideas are running out. Like in general, everything is becoming a parody of something else. I'm usually not big on remakes and revivals, but when it comes to classic cartoon characters, I'd say Warner Brothers has a moral duty to upkeep and remake them as much as they want and need to. Cause if they don't remake and reboot these characters for a new audience, they risk having these characters completely forgotten and lost in time while the whole world of Western animation just sits there and deteriorates over time and it's already started. So we need the classics to come back and we need artists and developers who grew up on these classics to keep passing that torch and giving us great new animated content. So watch Jellystone on HBO and support the new wave of animation. Also, support RetroSick, subscribe, and I'll be back to inform and remind later. This is protected by the red, the black, and the green at the crossroad with the key.